Hey everyone. In our last session, you found yourselves delving deep into the lineage of Asmodeus, the father of lies, piecing together a tapestry that suggests Glazia, his daughter, might just be the mother of Vizuriel. You then turned your attention to sartorial matters, bestowing upon Goba an ensemble to match his burgeoning status, a striking attire of red and black, a drip indeed fit for a goblin of aspirations. You set about sowing the seeds of insurrection within the goblin ranks, beginning with Grizzletooth, a figure of fear and respect, not yet ensnared in the web of Snaggleguts' inner circle. And now you find yourselves in the confines of Elder Rattlebone's hut, a sanctuary of shadow and secrets. The appointed time for your meeting with Grizzletooth draws near, around 20 minutes remaining to prepare, plan, and perhaps even ponder the path you've chosen. So what would you like to do? We would be best trying to figure out who else we will be trying to rally to our cause. Yeah, Grizzletooth's a good start, but do we have any more ideas on who to get involved? Well, we haven't really met anyone else of significance here, have we? Gobba, who else is there that's respected within the camp, but not within Snaggleguts' inner circle? Gobba scratches his head thoughtfully. Well, it depends on what route we're trying to go with the sneakiness. But one thing's for sure, we gotta be quiet about it, right? The more mouths yapping, the more likely word's gonna reach Snaggleguts' ears. There's Fiddlenick, the tinkerer, always fixing things up. He's got the ear of a lot of grunts. Then there's Slashgrin, the gambler, runs the dice games. Goblins always listen to someone who can make them rich or broke. I don't know if either of them would be the play, to be honest. Can you just list everyone that you can think of, Goba? It'll help us break it down. Goba once again begins to scratch his head as he tries to recall every potential ally within the camp before starting to list off names. Well, I've told you about Fiddlenick and Slash Grin. So I guess the next one would be Ziggletoe, the beast handler. He's got all the wargs eaten out of his hand, literally. They'd follow him to the ends of the earth if he told them to. Then there's Nubnose, our top scout. He moves like a shadow, he does. And can't forget Scab, a shaman. She was never as respected as Rattlebone, but her potions and charms? Worth their weight in gold before a fight. She ain't cozy with Snagglegut, mainly cause she's always been overlooked. But the others listen when she speaks. There's Gritjaw, the blacksmith. His work's in every hand and on every back. The warriors trust him. Poxface is another one. Head alchemist. His bruise can either save you or send you to the grave. Real handy, that one if you're looking for a subtle influence. Ah, and then there's Bone Skull, boss of the fighting pits. If he shows even a hint of doubt about Snagglegut, you'll have fighters questioning their loyalty in a heartbeat. Mudmaws the cook makes everything taste like it's fit for a king. Food's morale and morale's power. There you go, a whole bunch of them, each with their own pull in the camp. None too cozy with Snagglegut. That's really helpful. Thanks for that, Gaba. All right. So we need to strike at the heart of Snagglegut's operation subtly, where it'll hurt him the most without him even realizing it's happening. Let's assume we already have Grizzletooth on board. That means we would have the guard. So do we really need the dude in charge of the fighting pits? You mean Snagglefang? Yeah, Snagglefang. Gaba, is there any relation between Snagglefang or Snagglegut? Or is it just coincidence? Hell if I know! Gobbo names can be a bit on the nose, you know? Snaggle this and grizzle that. Lots of them sound alike, it's just the way of it. Just like you lot with your Johns and your Toms. But family names. Nah, that's a human thing, that is. We don't hold much stock in lineage most times. You mean lineage? If someone's earned a name for themselves, it's cause of what they've done, not who they popped out from. Well, that's good to know, I guess. But either way, we don't need him, so let's stay clear of that. What about, instead of going for those who have Snagglegut's ear, we go for those who've got his stomach? The Poisoner and the Cook hold their fates in their hands every day, quite literally. That's clever. Imagine a little seasoning added to their meals. Could have Snagglegut and his cronies out of commission? Yeah, and even if it doesn't off anyone, it could be just enough to make them under the weather, giving us an edge. So? We have Poxface the Poisoner tweak their next meal, and Mudmaw the cook serves it up. They won't suspect a thing from their trusted goblin chef. Yeah, I'd like to meet this Mudmaw. 
see if he's worth his salt in the kitchen. If we're going to pull this off, his cooking's got to be convincing. Can't have Snagglegut sniffing out something's off because the stew tastes like shit. And if Mudmaw's cooking up something special for Snagglegut, I want a taste. Gotta make sure it's got the right kick. After all, if you want to poison someone, it's got to be a dish they can't resist. You're joking, right? You want to eat some of the poison food to see if it has enough kick? Is there any better way? If I can resist it easily, then Snagglegut could too. That's stupid. I'd rather you be at your best to take him on. I mean, you're an absolute unit. If your performance fell off because of eating the poisoned food, then that would be a massive hit to us. I appreciate what you're saying, Alexandru. And I thank you for your compliments, but I want to know what we're dealing with. Let's hold off on that idea though, buddy. Alexandru's right. The last thing we would need is you crumpled over in a corner and not being able to do anything when the time comes. Anyway, would you really want to miss out on swinging that beautiful sword on Snagglegut? Hmm, that's an excellent point, Tronald. Yeah, and we could literally just ask the poisoner what effects it should have if it doesn't work on Snagglegut. It could work on some of his other core cronies. Plus, we don't even know if they're on board yet. Hell, we don't know if anyone will be on board. Let's just take it as it comes. So we're going with the poisoner and the cook, but it couldn't hurt to have one more, could it? I was thinking the warg tamer. Yeah, that'd be neat. And as for your comment, Saxy, yeah, this is all hypothetical at the moment, but we might as well come up with our best case plan whilst we have the time. Saxy, you're our best tactical thinker. I don't know about that, Tronald. You've done some things that I could never. Shh. I'm good with certain things, but this is your forte. Let's say we manage to get all of them guys on board. How do we go about seizing the power? Is it a case of us having to kill every one of them in the inner circle or what? All right, this is how we play it out. Joe. I walk over to Elder Rattlebone's table and begin grabbing bits and pieces that could be used to create a tactical map. Okay, first we have Poxface brew up something that won't kill Snagglegut and his lackeys. Just knocks them down a notch. Something to give them a good night's rest, or rather, a bad one. While they're out, we make our move. Grizzletooth steps in with the guards, creating a ring of steel around the place. No one gets in or out without going through them. They're our front line. Now, Ziggletoe, the warg tamer, he's key here. He and his beasts are our cavalry, our ace in the hole. Any of Snagglegut's goons trying to scatter or rally will be cut off. The wargs nipping at their heels, driving them right back into the fray. It's all about control and timing. We take out the head, the body flounders. With Snagglegut disoriented and his crew incapacitated, we control the narrative. We decide who fills the power vacuum. Now, if all goes to plan, if each of us plays our part to the letter, we might just get through this without a single life being lost. This is a coup d'etat, not a massacre. We're not butchers, we're liberators. And that's the message we need to send. Snagglegut won't know what hit him, and by the time he wakes up, he'll have no army to command, no power to wield. We'll have done it all without spilling blood. That's how you inspire a change in leadership. That's how you win hearts and minds. What? So no fighting? But I wanna... There could absolutely be a time for that. But Saxy's right. The less blood we spill, the more convincing Gaba's narrative will be. Gotta say, that's a plan and a half. Clever. Like, really clever. But you really think Snagglegut's just gonna roll over and hand over the reins? The bloke's as stubborn as he is mean. I mean, I likes the idea of doing this all quiet like. No fuss, no muss. But Snagglegut, he's a fighter. He is ain't likely to take kindly to waking up with the rug pulled out from under him. Well, when it comes down to it, that choice will rest squarely on Snagglegut's shoulders, or more precisely, whether he wishes to keep his head upon them. If all unfolds according to our design, he'll find himself standing alone, stripped of his command, with his cronies incapacitated. At that juncture, it's a simple decision. Relinquish power and live to skulk another day, or face Rar. And well, we all know Rar isn't known for his gentle touch. This is true. All right, guys, it's probably getting close to Grizzletooth arriving. Joe, how long do we have? I'd say you have a couple of minutes, tops. Well, in that case, I cast Disguise Self on myself, transforming into Elder Rattlebone once more. Then we wait. All right, guys. The room grows tense with anticipation as Might weaves the magic of his spell, his form shimmering and shifting until the imposing figure of Elder Rattlebone stands before the group once more. The transformation is seamless, leaving no trace of Might behind, only the fearsome visage of the goblin camp's dreaded mage. With the disguise in place, the atmosphere within Elder Rattlebone's hut becomes charged with a silent electric energy. 
time seems to slow, the only sounds being the occasional shift of weight from one foot to another, the soft, steady breathing of your companions, and the distant, muffled noises of the goblin camp life carrying on, oblivious to the scheme unfolding within these walls. All of you occupy yourself with your own thoughts, running through the plan once more in your mind, rehearsing your roles and anticipating potential snags alongside their solutions. As minutes tick by, the suspense builds. You exchange glances, nods of reassurance and determination. Then breaking the stillness, a knock at the door slices through the tension like a knife. It's firm, deliberate, and heavy. Grizzletooth has arrived. For a moment, you all share a collective pause. A final breath before reaching the point of no return. All right, Joe, I want to call out as ominously as I can. Come in, my sweet. The anticipation in the room thickens like fog. The door, barely sufficient to frame his massive form, creaks ominously under the strain as Grizzletooth stoops low to enter. His vast bulk dwarfs the doorway, and with a careless shift, part of the frame gives way under his immense weight, splintering with a sharp crack that slices through the tense silence. Grizzletooth halts, a look of alarm flashing across his features as beads of sweat glisten on his furrowed brow. The ogre, known for his formidable presence on the front gates, now seems almost comically out of place within the confines of the hut. He glances around nervously, acutely aware of every eye upon him and the damage he's inadvertently caused. Oh, bugger. You know, I'm really sorry about that. Ha! Huh? Didn't mean to at all, honestly. His gaze begins darting about as if seeking some way to mend the broken doorway with sheer will. I'm just a bit, uh, well, I'm just a bit oversized for these sorts of dwellings, aren't I? Wasn't quite expecting the, uh, architectural resilience to be quite so lacking, huh? Ha! Huh. He tries to joke, though the nervous laugh that follows does little to mask his unease. Wasn't sure what to expect coming here with Elder Rattlebone calling and all. Got the old nerves jittering. Not that I'm scared, you understand. More like intensely respectful of the, um, gravitas of the, um, situation. Shall I stop talking now? My dear Grizzletooth, in this humble dwelling of mine, your words are as welcome as the dawn. Speak, laugh, question. Here you are not merely a visitor, but an esteemed guest. Consider my home as yours, if only for the span of our conversation. He wobbles in a bit further, but the nervousness on his face is not fading. Please do be at ease. I am more than aware of the stories that whisper through the shadows of these walls, tales of fear, of untold secrets. Yes, my abode does indeed have a certain, let's call it a distinguished reputation. But let those tales not trouble your heart, for tonight you are under my protection. No harm shall befall you here. At least, not while our interests align. Well, I know a thing or two about well, things. And if those things can help you with your things, then um, things are good, right? What did you have in mind? Well, it pains me to see how poorly you and the rest of the camp are being treated. There's no true way to climb the ranks, is there? Goblins and ogres alike, dying at the whim of a leader who sees you as expendable. It's a system designed to keep you down. I believe it's time for a change, don't you? You know, you're not wrong there. Been guarding these gates for years, watching good lads get sent off to their doom. And for what? So Snagglegut can build his stockpile of treasures up even higher. A pat on the back if you're lucky? It's a load of crap. So you're suggesting change? Exactly, my dear. You have potential, untapped and wasted at these gates. Imagine a camp where merit and valor decide your standing where your strength and wisdom could truly be recognized. We can create that reality, Grizzletooth, but only if we stand together against the tyranny that holds us back. The massive ogre shifts his weight from one foot to the other. For a moment, there's a glimmer of something like eagerness in his eyes, his massive hands coming together in a rub of anticipation, as if the very notion of change sparks a flame within him. However, as quickly as it arrives, the eager light in his eyes dims, replaced by a shadow of doubt and concern. His brows furrow, and the earlier warmth in his demeanor chills over with a frost of suspicion. Hang on a tick. Ain't you and Snaggle got thick as thieves? Always thought you two were cut from the same cloth. This isn't some sort of trick, is it? 
because I've seen what happens to those who cross Snagglegut, and I'm not keen on ending up as warg feed. It's true that Snagglegut and I have had our, let's call them collaborations in the past, but dearie, even the strongest of bonds can fray when one party's ambition goes wayward. Snagglegut's grip on power has choked the life from this camp. It's a reign of fear, not respect. You see, my alignment with him was never out of loyalty, but necessity. And now, necessity dictates a change. Give me a deception check, Mite. That's a 23 total. Grizzletooth mulls over your words, Mite. The initial skepticism, slowly giving way to contemplation. All right, all right. If what you're spinning is the truth, if you're fair dinkum about flipping the script on this whole operation, then yeah, count me bloody in. But I've got to ask, who's going to sit on the big chair once Snaggleguts out on his ass? You planning to take the reins yourself? Because if that's the game, I wouldn't mind throwing my hat in the ring to be your right-hand ogre. Reckon that's where I'm meant to shine, eh? Permission to speak, Elder Rattlebone. You don't need to ask for permission, Saxy, my dear. None of you do. Speak as and when you wish. In this circle, all voices are valued, all opinions considered. Now, what's on your mind? Here's the lay of the land as we see it. The plan is to elevate Goba to the position of boss. He's got the right blend of wit and grit for the job, and more importantly, he's got a vision for this camp that extends beyond mere survival or power grabs. We, however, plan to keep order from the shadows. We don't crave the spotlight, nor do we seek any direct control. Our sole aim is to ensure prosperity for all within this camp. Stability, safety, and a fair shot for every goblin and ogre to rise based on merit, not fear or favoritism. And Grizzletooth, we've given some thought to your role in all of this. We see you as Gaba's right-hand ogre. You got the respect, the strength, and the know-how to help steer this ship through whatever storms may come. Gaba's always spoken highly of you, and we believe you're the ideal candidate to stand by him to help guide and protect the camp under this new leadership. Grizzletooth, energized by the unfolding revelations, lets out a hearty chuckle, shaking his head in disbelief. I knew it! I always knew Gobba was something special. A real diamond in the rough, eh? But wait just a blooming minute here. You lot aren't actually Gobba's underlings, are ya? Pulling strings from behind the scenes like puppet masters, yeah? This whole scheme, it's been simmering on the back burner for a while now, hasn't it? Crafty, very crafty indeed. And you... He turns his attention fully towards Might, still disguised as Elder Rattlebone. Did you orchestrate this whole dance? Sent Gobba out into the wilds to fetch these fine folks, all to stage this grand performance? Because if that's the case, then you're even more cunning than I thought. And I mean that as the highest of compliments. To think, all this time, gobba has been the linchpin in a plot to topple Snagglegutter. Eh? It's genius. Pure genius. Exactly. You're just as sharp as Gobba has told us. So, if you're fully on board, would you like to hear the plan? Grizzletooth's laughter fills the room. Yeah, I'm in. If Gobba's to be the new head honcho, and you lot are his shadowy council, then I'm all too chuffed to throw in with you. Let's hear it then. How are we going about this? All right, Grizzletooth. Here's how we're going to play it. First up, we need you to rally the guards, get them on our side. We're counting on your influence to sway them towards our cause. It's crucial they stand with us when the time comes. Mudmaw, the cook, and Poxface, the master of poisons, have a key part to play. They'll be concocting a sleeping draft. Nothing harmful, mind you, just enough to ensure Snagglegut and his closest cronies are out of the picture when we make our move. This will be discreetly added to their evening meal. Now as the sun dips below the horizon and night cloaks the camp. That's when you, along with the guards now loyal to our cause, will encircle their keep. Your job is to ensure that nobody gets in or out. It's a blockade, a show of force that tells Snagglegut his time is up without spilling a drop of blood. Meanwhile, Ziggletoe, the wargmaster, will be mobilizing his beasts. He and his wargs will also circle around, ready to detain and nullify any of Snaggleguts loyalists who managed to slip past your blockade. It's a containment operation designed to minimize chaos and prevent any form of retaliation. One thing to note, Grizzled Tooth, is that we haven't actually managed to speak to any of the others yet. Mudmaw, Poxface, Ziggletoe, we're assuming they'll be on board once we lay out the vision and the part they'll play in it. But that's the direction we're aiming for. 
Grizzletooth, now visibly more relaxed and clearly on board with the plan, nods thoughtfully at your explanation, Saxy. Yeah, well, that all sounds good to me, mate. When it comes to loyalty, my boys will back me with whatever I say. They trust me and I trust them. It's as solid as that. He pauses for a second, scratching his chin as if a new thought just struck him. Um, just a thought. But if I'm to be the right-hand man of the boss when this is all said and done, do you reckon it might be a good idea for me to have a chat with Mudmore, Poxface, and Ziggletoe myself? I'm on good terms with them. Could lay out the plan, share a bit of the vision and whatnot, try to convince them over. Yeah, well, that would be brilliant if you feel comfortable doing that. It keeps things more discreet. If word got around camp that Elder Rattlebone's been taking notable figures back to her abode one by one, people might start asking questions. Exactly. Discretion is key here. Grizzletooth speaking to them directly not only lends credibility to our cause, but also minimizes the risk of raising alarm. It's a smart play. Oh, thanks for that, mechanical man. Indeed. Your rapport with them could make all the difference, Grizzletooth, my dear. Convincing them individually in an environment where they feel secure might just sway them to our side without attracting undue attention. Plus, it allows us to gauge their reactions in a more controlled setting. If any of them have reservations or doubts, it's better to address those one-on-one. -on -one. We can't afford any leaks or dissent at this stage. Yep, the less chatter there is about meetings with Elder Rattlebone, the better. Meeting back at the gate to get an update sounds like a good plan. As for if they're not on board, well, we will need to reassess our approach. It doesn't spell the end of our plans, but it does mean we'll have to be even more cautious moving forward. Grizzletooth shifts his weight, a practical gleam in his eye. Let's just cut to the nitty gritty. There's camp scuffles all the time. Goblins fighting and dying all the time. It's the way of life around here. Now, if during our little chat, it looks like they're not gonna be on board with our plan and might go squealing to Snagglegut. Want me to end them there and then? Um, I'm not sure about that. Yes, if they look like they're gonna rat us out, then do what must be done. We've got to think of the camp as a whole. One or two individuals can't be the reason for everything falling apart. Agreed. But only as a last resort, Gerzeltooth, we're going through with this to try and make this camp thrive, not lose more lives. Right, got it. Only if we're backed into a corner then. Alrighty. I'm off to chew the fat with them now. Catch you lot in a few hours, yeah? And with that, Grizzletooth makes his way to the exit. Sweet. He's gone now, right? Yeah, he's gone. Well, all in all, I think that went pretty well. Wait a second. What if he was bullshitting us? None of us actually tried to determine whether he was being truthful. That's a very disturbing thought. If that was the case, it's pretty much too late for us to do anything now. We've just got to trust in him. I don't see him turning his back on us. Not only did he look terrified of Rattlebone, but the idea of more power for him and a better camp life in general seemed to appeal to him quite a bit. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. So what are we doing for the next few hours then? We lay low. There's nothing else we really need to do now, assuming Grizzletooth holds up his end. I guess we just prepare ourselves. All right then. Over the next few hours, I'm just gonna spend some time with Gaba, asking him a few questions about leadership, training with his spells and whatnot, just to fill the time. I'm gonna clean and sharpen my sword. I know it's not the plan to use it, but I want him looking his best if it comes to that. Him? Since when did your sword get a gender, Rar? What's next? You gonna start taking it out for dinner? So, what's his name then? Swordy McSwordface? I didn't know you were a sword whisperer. I suppose it makes sense, in a way. Most people name their pets, after all. Huh? That's got nothing to do with anything. Lots of people name their swords as well. But it's the fact he called it him. Well, what can I say? He's a good listener. Huh. Um, wait a minute, Rar. You're not actually serious, are you? Is there something more about your sword we should know? Nah, just having a bit of fun with you all. Oh, okay. Right. Anyway, I'm just gonna make sure my armor is up to scratch, Joe. Clean it out and whatnot. All right, guys, you all find ways to pass the anxious hours before your rendezvous with Grizzletooth. Tronald, seizing the opportunity for some impromptu mentorship, diligently works with Gubba on refining his spellcasting techniques. The room occasionally lights up with the glow of magical energy, each successful spell a testament to Goba's growing prowess. However, not all attempts go as planned. 
At one point, an errant spell from Goba's enthusiastic hands sends a spark flying into a pile of dried herbs, resulting in a brief but startling blaze. The fire, quickly extinguished by a well-placed douse of magic from Tronald, leaves behind a charred reminder of the fine line between control and chaos. Saxe dedicates himself to the care of his armor, each piece receiving a meticulous polish. The sight of him engrossed in his task is a portrait of dedication, unflinching even as the sudden flare-up from Goba's misfire adds unexpected excitement to the afternoon. Noon. Meanwhile, Rar finds solace in the steady rhythm of sharpening his sword. The scrape of metal against stone only interrupted briefly by the commotion caused by Goba's fiery mishap. As the hours slip by, the clinking of armor and the steady rhythm of Rar's sharpening, the moment to depart draws inexorably closer. Before you know it, the appointed time has arrived, and a shared look among you confirms it's time to venture out and meet Grizzletooth. It's time, guys. So, are we all going to meet him, or what? Well, Might should stay here for now alongside someone else. Then, the rest of us can go and meet Grizzletooth. Well, if you're planning on going and meeting him, Saxy, I'll come with you. Okay, sweet. You two aren't going anywhere without me. What if someone tries to pull something and I ain't there to protect you? So I'll stay here and cat sit then. Great, if all goes to plan, we shouldn't be long. Just crossing the T's and dotting the I's. All right then, Joe. We make our way out of here and towards the front gates. We will be taking Gaba with us. Okay then. With Goba in tow, you all make your way out of Elder Rattlebone's hut towards the front gates of the camp. The atmosphere outside is palpably different. While not eerily silent, the usual cacophony of raucous laughter, clattering mugs, and the rough and tumble of goblin life is conspicuously subdued. This quiet, while not alarming, is unusual enough to note. As you navigate through the camp's winding paths, the reason for this change slowly becomes apparent. At first, it's just a lone goblin, pausing in his task to give you a subtle nod of recognition, his gaze lingering with a mix of curiosity and something akin to respect. Then it happens again, and again. Each encounter, each nod, reinforces the sensation that word has begun to spread, not through the grapevine of gossip and rumors, but through the selective sharing of a grander vision. After a few minutes of walking, you come across Grizzletooth. The large ogre, typically a beacon of joviality and unchecked laughter, presents a markedly different demeanor. Positioned at his usual post by the camp's entrance, his gaze is turned inward, surveying the camp with an intensity that belies his usual carefree nature. As he spots you approaching, there's no shout of greeting, no booming laughter. Instead, Grizzletooth meets your group with a focused, almost solemn nod a clear sign that the gravity of the knight's plans weigh heavily on him as well. Hey there, Grizzletooth. How did everything go? <sighs> Smooth as butter. No heads needed cracking, either. They were all pretty keen to jump on board. Didn't have to flex the muscles too much, just laid out the vision, you know? Promised them positions within the inner circle and a fair share of Snagglegut's hoard. That caught their attention. But more than that, I think they're genuinely excited about the change, about doing things differently around here. What time is it now, Joe? It's around three in the afternoon. All right, okay. What time does Snagglegut usually eat? Well, the camp usually gathers for grub about two hours from now. That's when Snagglegut likes to have his feast, right as the evening starts to settle in. Gives him time to lord over everyone, make his rounds, you know? That's brilliant work, by the way, Grizzletooth. We will need to get ahead of the ball here and make sure that nobody who's involved in this plot tonight eats anything. Oh, I've already sorted all of that. All of my lads know to chuck the food away discreetly or just not get anything at all. He chuckles lightly, recalling the reaction to his orders. They were a little bit disgruntled by the idea, mind you. Nobody likes the thought of skipping a meal. But I promised them a feast fit for a king come the morn. Told them this one night of empty bellies will be worth it when we're scooping up Snagglegut's hoard and toasting to a new era. That perked him right up. You've gone above and beyond, Grizzletooth. Absolutely. You've handled this brilliantly. By the way, did Poxface give any indication how long it take for the sleeping draft to kick in? Timing is going to be critical for us to coordinate our next moves seamlessly. Grizzletooth nods, recalling the details provided by the camp's poisoner. Yeah, Poxface mentioned it'd be around 30 minutes before they started feeling super tired. Then, over the next 30 minutes, if they weren't already asleep, they'd just collapse on the spot. Said he's made it strong enough to ensure no one's fighting off its effects. As long as they get a good dose with their meal, we're set. Is that it then? Is everything in order? I'm a little bit disappointed. I never got to meet the cook though. Don't you worry about that, mate. You'll have plenty of time to meet Mudmore tonight. Evening feasts are always a big occasion around here. 
All the gobbos from the camp gather, drink, eat, gamble, fight, and party. It's a right laugh, it is. A real showcase of goblin culture at its finest, if I do say so myself. That is, if you plan on coming to it, probably be a good idea, yeah? Show the lads that you're out here putting your neck on the line, same as them. Plus, Mudmaw's a character. You'll like him. Mm, we will see about that. All right then. So it looks like we will have a little goblin party to go to tonight then. Should be fun. I've never actually partied with this many gobbos before. Oh, mate, you're in for a wild ride. Gobbo parties? There's something else. Imagine the rowdiest, most chaotic mess you can, then add in some explosive mushrooms, a dash of fire water, and you're halfway there. Just a week or two ago, right? We had this party, right? And I kid you not, it ended up in a full-on brawl over who could eat the most fire beetles. Raw. And just when you think it can't get any more bonkers, in comes Tinker Tail, riding a barrel down the hill straight into the bloody campfire. The barrel explodes, right? Sends mushrooms flying everywhere. Half the camp seeing colors for the next two days. And Tinker Tail, he emerges from the smoke, singed but triumphant, declares himself the king of fire beetles, and passes out on the bloody spot. What the fuck? The moral of the story, never underestimate a gobbo's capacity for mayhem, or their ability to turn anything into a competition. Tonight's gonna be one to remember, just you wait. Indeed it is. All right then, Grizzletooth. We're going to head back to Elder Rattlebone and let her know that everything is ready to go. We will come back here as soon as we finish telling her, then we can get this party started. 